Good evening, everyone. How are you? I thought we'd paint something tonight. Kind of simple, so it won't take us very long. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. There you go. It's not going to take us very long. Let me see if I can lower this just a hair. Ah, there you go. Can you see that now? Or is that too low? Okay. Got my painting tray, so supply number one. Supply number two, at least two sizes of brushes. Here's the start, here's the two that I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna start with a wider brush that looks like this for the bigger areas. And then I'm gonna, I selected this smaller detail brush for the smaller areas. So that's what this, that's, and this is what we're painting. It's a little Coco Pele flower pot. But I do have it flipped upside down for a reason. When you're painting flower pots like this one, I like to start with the bottom and get all the sides and everything while the pot's upside down. Because it's going to be sitting on its bottom when we detail it or further in. Or you could even hold it on your hand, which is probably what we'll do. Because this gives you a good way to turn it. But I don't leave the bottom bare. If I'm going to paint the pot, it's going to be bottom, top, sides, the whole bit. So I turn it upside down so that I have a way to paint the bottom. I'll paint the bottom, then I'll probably put it on my hand to paint the sides. What we're going to, colors we're going to use. This is from Apple, this is not sponsored, this is Apple Barrel acrylic paint key west i got that at walmart now if you're going to be painting with a color a lot and you know it's a favorite color of yours then don't buy these little two fluid ounces these are for your colors you're not going to use much or your highlight colors for your main colors you're going to use a lot try to get a bigger bottle like this one this is burnt umber and I got a great big bottle of it because I knew I'd go, uh, I'd use it a lot. I'm going to look for a bigger bottle of this color. But we're going to use that color. We are going to use Inca Gold. These are all metallic, pa uh, um, acrylic, I'm sorry, paints. Licorice, which is a brown black, kind of dark combo. We are going to use, this is the only glitter we're using, which is a black glitter. We want Coco Pele to stand out a little bit. And we're going to use some orange. So what you want to do, get your painting tray. If you don't have one of these little painting trays as handy as they are, you can use a paper plate. I've done that many times. Uh, like I said, a paper plate or those little pie type tins that like a pot pie comes in when your family gets done with the pot pie have them clean the tin and then let it dry and you can use that for your paints and let and uh, if there's paint still left in the bottom let it dry and then it'll peel right off especially the little tin ones not uh, not so what much the paper ones but the tin ones now that i've mistakenly forgotten that i didn't have the orange open and had to open the cap. We're not going to use a lot of the orange, so I don't need to squirt a lot out. But sometimes when your paint's been sitting a while, it'll be a little gloppy. Now, I want to show you the difference. You see how, let me get my pointer out. You see how this one's kind of running? Yeah, there it goes. See how it's, whoa almost running out of the thing running and run, that's how it should be this is how the orange is see how it's kind of staying together it's a little tight that's gloppy that means the paint's been sitting a while no big deal uh get your brush slightly wet shake off the excess water and then 
use a wet brush to use the orange paint since it's been that way. This one hasn't even been opened. Lucky me. I hate trying to open these. I don't have fingernails. Some of my art friends, they have these long nails and I never could understand how they have long nails and art do artwork. So I just unscrew the cap and I'll get the plastic off later. And I'm going to just put a very small amount. I didn't mean for that. Now, since I got a lot more of that than I wanted when I'm done painting with it, I will take a bigger, wider paintbrush that's clean. Yeah, that one's not wide enough. Yeah, that one will work. I'll take one of these and scoop the paint up and put it back in the bottle. Because I, yeah, that's brand new. That's a lot of paint. I don't want to waste it. Let me see what other colors. I need the black. We need to put out some of this black because that's going to be the Coco Pele, the Native American dude. Wrong, right or wrong, I've seen him. Sometimes you got to really squeeze to get things out of the bottle. So I've seen, I've seen him painted black. So that's what we're going to do. So there's our colors and our black glitter. We won't need much of, so we're not going to, we're going to get that paint directly from the bottle. All right. Get your, we don't want to start with the detail brush. That's going to be, let me use my pointer again. That's going to be for these fine details. The, these are raised shapes. Can you see that? I want you to be very clear on this. These are these are raised up. And so that's what the detail brush is for. We don't want to mess those up. Right now we're just getting the base of the pot here. All this here. And we're leaving the raised parts alone. Okay. Now, if you cannot get as tight into these raised parts as you want for a clean look. Uh, because your hands shake or you're not good with painting, you're just learning, paint over the raised parts, paint it all. Let it dry and then change the uh, paint over that on your raised parts. That way the, ra the parts that aren't raised will still be covered where they should be touching. And then as you get better on painting, you can learn how to just come up to the edge of the raised part and then back your paintbrush off, okay? It's easier for me to not lecture you about this and not do it. But another piece of your painting stuff, you got to have your smock, have your towel in your lap, wet your paintbrush, and then wipe it on your towel so it's not soaking wet. It's just damp. The reason why you're doing this, because I'm not going to tell you and not explain, but some of these brushes... That's a good one. It can be either really stiff because they didn't get cleaned properly, like this one. Or they get really kind of old, like my fan brush here, and they don't, the bristles don't sit where they should. Like that. Let's see if I can find another brush that might have a better. Yeah, see how this one has some flyaway at the, at the tip? How it's not all gathered at the tip like a brand new brush would be. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. Knocked over the paint. Watch what you're doing. Um, and you take a pair of scissors and you trim that. But that's another reason you wet your brush. Because that will calm all that down into a flat surface. And make it easier to paint with. So let's get our teal color. That's what I'm going to call this. This uh, this color here. Get some on your brush. And go. make sure you got all the stickers off. Because you don't want to paint over a sticker and then have it peel off. And you have one unpainted spot on your ceramic. Been there. Done that. How embarrassing. But everybody starts somewhere. 
okay? Just dab will do, you know, you don't have to pile the paint on. And if you do have a spot, see what I mean by putting it on your hand? I want you to make, you know, close your fingers like so, or you can make a fist, but with this shape of the pot, it, it's more narrow at the base. So make a shape like that, and then just stick the pot on your hand. And see how we got bumps because we've got too much paint? Just smooth that out. Just smooth that out. That's all we need to do. Just smooth that out. Now, sometimes you need to let a surface dry just a little bit before you put your second coat on. Even if you're going to do the second coat right away, go to another area while that gets at least tacky so that all your paint's not all wiping off. Let that get to have time to dry a little bit. So, put some more paint on your brush. Now, go down onto the bottom and just brush it across. Go slower when you get to one of your raised areas. Don't need to, now if you can't hold your hand like that, which is something I'm having trouble with, grab it around the rim. But you don't go fast around your raised areas because then you'll go and get paint where you don't want. If there's an area too narrow, save that for your detail brush. Let's just get the big areas right now. See, I'm not getting that too close because I can't see what I'm doing. I'm using the camera to guide me. So let's just, all right, I got up to the foot. See that? See how we're not completely up to the foot? What you're going to do, don't load your paintbrush again. Don't do it. I know the temptation's there to put more paint on your brush. Don't do it. Take your brush and run it through some of the painted areas because they might have some paint kind of built up. And now, put your edge of your, the very tip of your brush, this part, the edge. Put it down on the ceramic and push against your raised edge so that the brush will form the shape of the raised edge. I'm trying to see that and then pull out. So put your brush against your raised edge, push down, pull out. And if you need to reload your brush, do it in the middle of a gap, an area without a raised edge. See that? The reason why is because when you freshly load your brush with paint, you've got extra paint on your brush and it's going to transfer extra paint to your work. So go to another spot of the work that has an open gap. When you freshly load your brush, paint that open gap first. You see how that beaded up? That's extra paint. We don't want that near our raised edge because that would cause you to paint over it. All right, so smooth it out, which kind of puts some of the paint back on your brush a little bit. Now that we've got all the extra paint off our brush and onto our work, we can go back and do this raised area. Let me try to, trying to do this with you and then not knock things over and get it to where you can see. That's my biggest problem. Nope. All right. Right here. See how I'm putting it against the, the raised work? Sometimes you're going to get a little paint on your raised work. Don't flip out on me. That's fine. You'll finish that up and finish painting. Just push it against it. Push down, pull out. Push down, push, pull out. That's all you do. Now, if your hands hurt, because even if you're not disabled, holding your hands in an odd position that you're not used to for a longer period of time is going to cramp your hands and your fingers, especially when you first start painting, 
because you're not used to holding little items like these paintbrushes. So don't be afraid to put your paintbrush down. That's why a lot of your artists, if you actually look at their turntables, they've got glitter and splotches of paint. Well, if they use glitter, but they've got splotches of paint all over the turntable. It's not nice and neat. It's painted up and splotched up because they put their paintbrushes down when they need to. I've known people who actually do this to their paint palettes and their turntables until they get loaded with colors and then they hang them up on the wall for art. They clear cut them and hang them on the wall. I know I have a friend who does, uses only wooden paint palettes and when they get like this, uh, see? When they get like this or more loaded with color, he clear, lets them dry, clear coats them, and then puts them on the wall for artwork and he goes to his newest paint palette. So even your paint palettes can be a work of art. You're the only one that defines your work of art. If someone else doesn't see your vision, that's fine. But don't let that bring you down. If they don't see your vision, they have their own vision. That's fine. They don't have to see your vision. They just don't have to buy your work either. Don't ever let your vision die because of what someone else thinks or says or does. All right. I did not reload my brush. You're going to do more not loading your brush here than you are loading. Ah. There it is. I knew the spot that I could see that you could see. Push, push it in and do that. That's how you're going to get around these uh, raised areas. Now, if you need to reload your brush, if you absolutely have no other choice, what I want you to do, there's my paint palette. Take the very top of the brush, the bottom, this part, I'm going to, this part here, all right, and I want you to take the side of your paint thing where there's not a big puddle of paint. We're at the edge of the paint puddle and just push in, lift up. Just a very quick dab. Push in, lift up. That quick. You've reloaded your brush, but you don't have a ton on it. Now that will enable you to get in more of these areas. With this bigger detail brush, I'm not going to be able to get all the way around Coco Pele. So I'm going to have to switch to my smaller detail brush. That's okay. We're not there yet. Let's get all the big areas painted before we go switching brushes. Do all the work with one brush before you do another. Now, I want you to look at the bottom where we started painting. Remember I said give it some time? It's already ready. It's already ready for the second coat. It's dry, it's ready to go. Some materials will soak in the paint a lot quicker than other materials, so they will dry faster. All right, and this is terracotta. Terracotta likes paint. It dries quick, it soaks in a lot of paint, so you can use brighter colors, you can use double, triple coats, that's fine. But always be cognizant of your design. Now, if your design wants a different color on the bottom of the pot or to leave it bare, that's fine. That's your design. My design, I want all of it. So the bottom's already had its second coat that fast. The rest of it's going to go that quick, especially if I shut up and paint. Now, like I said, if you get you get that raised part and you still got you got some paint on your coco pele fine 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 your raised up spot has has paint on it don't flip out on me especially if you're using terracotta don't try to hurry and get that stuff off you are going to smear it worse sometimes trying to remove paint from a piece is going to smear it a lot worse than if you didn't. If you just let it dry and then correct it in your finished painting. Okay? 
So, you know, don't, don't flip out on me and, oh my God, I got to get this off. And then you're going to smear it so badly that it's going to be a hard piece to rescue. And try to go the same direction. Yeah, I hear you. Do as I say, not as I do, because you just saw me go a different direction. Now, when these areas, when you don't have a lot of room, go the same side to side. But sometimes, like here, because of the way, I need to go backward. I had been going forward, and I realized that wasn't working for me. So now I'm going the other direction. I'm still going side to side, but I'm going back toward the sun instead of toward Coco Pele. I was going toward Coco Pele. I'm switching it, but I'm still doing a side to side brush stroke. That way the lines in your paint aren't going like a kid, like a kid who doesn't know how to color when they first start coloring in the coloring book. And some of your art pieces, especially when you first start, they're gonna look like that. Now, if you've got an area like what's between his feet and you don't have a detail brush use the corner of your brush see where i've loaded the paint in that corner this is the time when you're going to load your paint then tap it a little to get some of your excess off and then go in your area with just the corner pushing down and then push down and pull out a very short stroke Ladies, it's like putting on mascara, or yeah, uh, eyelash stuff. Forget what you call it, leave me alone. But it's like putting on makeup. Some of the strokes you use are very broad, some are very uh, shallow. And if you're a guy that's a makeup artist, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Anybody can do makeup. But once you give yourself a direction such as up and down or side to side let's try not to change that too drastically or it will show up in your paint okay now we're just gonna like i said we're gonna jump to a detail brush And sometimes you don't want to use the flat part of your brush. You just want to use this end here because the area might be real narrow that you want to move the paint and you need to be cognizant of where you're at. You see what I'm saying? And if you have any questions about anything I do or say and you're like, hey, you didn't explain this or whatever, Leave them down in the comments. I will gladly answer your questions. If I can find enough questions, maybe I can do a Q&A video. Now, I don't know how many pots like this you're going to see that are raised. And notice now that the bottom is dry, I did lay it down. But if you make sure there, if you don't make sure the debris is off of your turntable, you're gonna get debris on the bottom. Uh, if you have a surface that has debris, and you have cling wrap or wax paper, you can cover the turntable with the cling wrap or the wax paper and use painter's tape to tape it to the underside of the turntable to give you a clean surface if you can't get your other surface completely clean. Because sometimes you just can't get the glitter off or, you know, little Susie used your turntable to make a project and now you've got tons of glitter everywhere or whatever, you know. Somebody dropped wood shavings on something and now they're everywhere. If you can't clean it up, use painter's tape and either cling wrap or uh, wax paper, parchment paper. And if you're using cling wrap, if you put it in the refrigerator and it gets cold, you have just a few more minutes to mess with it that it won't stick to itself. As soon as it starts to warm up though, that window closes rapidly. Sometimes, see, you just do smooth, soft strokes. And I wasn't careful and I went over the bottom of his foot. No big, no big. Just pushing it against the area and pulling out. 
and the areas that I can't get with this bigger brush, I'm just leave that be, let that be happy little area till I get back to it. Kind of like Bob Ross and his happy little, little trees. It's cold out, so sometimes it's nice to sit with the music on or if you have a fireplace be careful with fireplaces and paints please um but like some music on or some christmas lights twinkling or you know and do a do a family project don't tell your kids no 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 mom's working on something you know get some i use a tablecloth to cover my tables you know that but maybe get tape down a piece of parchment paper on the table and um that's their painting area and let them know they can't go off to parts from paper because that's their painting area and give them an old flower pot one that you don't give a toot about or grab some of these because i'm i've got five of these two bigs and three smalls and i'm going to paint these five as a set for seedling starters what you can do if you like to garden and you like to paint get some of these let them paint their own pot and then let them start their own seed in the spring and then they can do a report if they're homeschooled or whatever on on how the thing is growing maybe get them a did disposable camera and have them take pictures and write out on a piece of paper what they observe as their plant grows that way they're involved all the way up and then when you transplant something out of this they still have their pot they painted it's their plant they grew it and you connect them in with your gardening that way especially if it's a vegetable they grow the vegetable they get to pick it they might be more apt to eat it just an idea but you don't have to paint alone granted my little boy doesn't paint but my poor little baby he's got a stomach ache uh, so he He's over there on his dog. He's actually in my room on my bed asleep. Don't get to talking to someone and forget to, uh, and you got too much paint on your brush. You got to pay attention too. You, you got to learn to split your time. And that's another good thing. You know, kids, they build memories with mom and dad, but it also teaches them something like how to split their time, how to use their imagination don't tell them they can't have a purple elephant or a purple ceramic pot with green and pink polka dots don't ever limit them like that you may think it looks horrible and you know what when they grow up my god mom why'd you let me paint that looking like that but they've learned a lesson that they can use their imagination and maybe they can think their way out of a situation instead of using fists they can use their mind. There's a show called Dangerous Minds. It's a true story movie about a teacher. And they're right with that title. Your mind can be your most dangerous weapon. So why not learn to use it? Now around the starburst, I'm being kind of careful. And this is the first coat. So it doesn't all have to be a perfectly even color coat you know it's going to look thinner in some areas on the first coat and that's okay that will even up in the second coat okay see there's some areas inside the coco pele and stuff the area inside the sun is not going to get colored this blue color because i'm going to use an orange in there or a gold and then the outside ring of the sun is going to be, the inside ring is going to be gold, orange rather, and the outside will be that gold, that Inca gold. But areas of my dude, like right there, still need to be painted right there. That will be this other brush because the bristles are smaller. All right. But we want to get everything painted with this big brush first that we need to paint. 
I don't like switching brushes unless I have to because then I wind up sticking my br wrong brush in the wrong color paint. I have done it, so I will tell you so you do not do that. And then I wasn't paying attention, probably because no, normally if I'm not videoing with you and I'm painting, I've got music on. So I'm bopping with the music, singing with it, or whatever, and um, not paying, quite paying full attention to myself, but um, I, you can mess up that way. And if you're not doing this for a gift, for, you know, no reason to be quite too picky because I have painted gifts all year long. And then at Christmas time, everybody I was giving a gift to had something that was hand painted as a gift. And to be honest, it saved me money. But it was also fun to give an individualized gift because I didn't get everybody the same ceramic everybody didn't have the same paint colors i tried to individualize it to what they what i knew they would like like this one lady and her husband i got them i hand painted them a nativity that had a piece for the manger that was a big like ball it was one big piece and then there was the manger pieces that fit in and around it and it, it was the biggest one, uh, the the most with the most pieces are the mangers that I paint. I'm just going to get this real quick, so, yeah. Put it against it and pull out. When you're putting your brush against something, you don't want to go backward toward the raised image, okay? You want to put it against the raised image and go away from your raised image, whatever direction away is in that, on that particular piece. All right. So now there's about two coats on the bottom, one coat on the sides. And now if you look, that side coat, this is terracotta, sweetie. That's already dry. We can go to go in and a little more paint this time. We're going to go a little heavier. So be careful. But if you mess it up, don't sweat it on me, okay? We can clean it. We can fix it. And now we're just moving. You're moving a little thick, a longer strokes on the second coat. You want it to move, have a smoother look. So try to make longer strokes. Uh, get the paint all smooth. Don't let it be bumpy and gather. Like the, sometimes the paint, especially on terracotta, likes to gather and and get thick and just sit there and then it will it will dry that way if you have to go toward your raised edge instead of pushing against it and pulling away number one you're gonna get paint on your raised edge 90 percent of the time that's okay but if you've got to go toward your raised edge First, you need paint on your brush. Now, I'm gonna go toward my raised edge. Slow down to when you get near it and then flick up. Slow down, don't keep pressing and pulling once you get near it. Let your brush start going backward and flick up. Now see, you're still gonna get paint on your raised edge. That's why we're doing the first coat and you do your raised edges. The last thing you paint is your raised edges. So let's do that again. You go all the way, slow down, and then bring your brush up. Don't just like that and you're gonna flick paint. That's why I said you slow down and bring your brush up slowly. Lift it slowly. Now I have room, so I can do the other method. But now sometimes you don't have the ability to do either one of those methods. So you put paint on a corner of your brush, lay the corner at the top of the raised edge, and slowly move it down the raised edge. Just like that, okay? And then clean up your painting. So some, it depends on how much room you've got on the piece that you're 
working on. Now this second coat, we're going to want to move a little faster and we're going to want to make it a little smoother looking because this terracotta, again, when you're doing terracotta pots, they look beautiful painted, but they soak in the paint and they dry really fast, really fast. So that's what, why we want to be careful. We want it to have a smooth complexion when it's finished. A smooth look. Wait, sorry. Had a muscle spasm in my foot. I hate it when I do that when I'm painting. Sometimes I have a muscle spasm in my hand when I'm painting and woo! Yeah, then I, that's how come I learned about finished painting. I taught myself by many mistakes. Now, sometimes you still have to do a very short stroke, but you want to make it look smooth as you can on your second coat. It doesn't have to look that smooth on the first coat because that's not what's going to be showing through. But your second coat, that's what everybody's going to see. Just made you nervous, didn't I? Like I said, the terracotta is a great canvas. It takes almost any kind of paint. It sucks it in. It looks amazing when they're gla glazed. And I use a spray clear coat uh, that you get in a spray can. So, and, and I just, I let it, the, I spray the heck out of it, let it dry. Spray the heck out of it, and I let it dry overnight before I spray the next coat. And I just make it so thick that it can't help but shine. Now see, we're getting a smoother look. And the second coat is going into some of those areas where it looked really thin. And we're dealing with that. But we're still not dealing with the fine detail areas because we're not using that brush yet, are we? Now, if you uh, get, if you don't see a glob of paint and it dries in a ridge like that, you can scrape it off. It will peel the paint off underneath it. It's okay. You might have to sand it a little to make it a smooth edge and then pre-paint it. All right. Now look, I was trying to do a clean strip and look, I painted over the sun a little bit. The good thing about these raised images is exactly that they're raised. You're going to be able to find them again. Now I'm going to keep these two. I just decided we're going to do these in the colors of the sun, the orange and the yellow. So this one will be orange, this one will be yellow. So as quick as that, there's the teal. Now for switching brushes. No, we're not doing this yet. The reason is, even though it is this wider's brush type of work, I want to do all the same color first. All right, then when we switch to these two colors, it will be done with the sun. So all the same color gets painted at the same time. Remember to clean your brush really well. You've seen some of my brushes that didn't get cleaned real good. I put some Dawn water in my Dawn dish soap or any dish soap in my water with my uh, brushes and I find my brushes clean better with warmer water. A friend of mine has a friend of mine has one of them uh, USB co those electric coffee warm cup warmers. It looks like a little coaster that you set your cup up. Uh, and she puts her uh, coffee cup on that with her painting uh, cleaning water in it for her brushes to keep it warm so that the paint brushes are always being cleaned in warm water. I thought it was a pretty good idea. Okay. We are now switching to our detail brush. 
this is to make it more comfortable for a grip if you want to know why that's there. So now we're going back into our teal color. I don't care what you call this, blue, teal, whatever. Now, you can load the brush a little thicker, but not that much. So even your detail brush, make sure you don't have way too much paint on it. Go in and the same, just follow the same instructions you did with the bigger brush, but this time you're doing a smaller brush. But because this is also a smaller, and now see, see, that's too much paint. Why is that too much paint? Because if then if there is that much paint, it will get in the areas we do not wish it. Now I want to show you something. I don't know if you can see this, but you see that tip on the brush? You see that piece of brush poking out? That does happen sometimes, no matter if you have an expensive brush or not. You get them a little bit and they they do that. So see how I did that? You just and I didn't quite grab it all because I was trying to show you. But you just grab a hold of it and kind of pull that out. The older your brushes get, that happens sometimes. And if your brushes are, uh, even if they're, you know, camel hair from Arabia, I don't care. Uh, that's going to happen to them. So now that that's a really small area, it's already dry. So we can go ahead and go in with our second coat. Now I'm having to do it down like this instead of side across because it's a smaller area. Just make sure your area is clean and there's no raised paint anywhere and it won't matter in a small space. That rule is more for a larger area. If they're taking a magnifying glass to your work then you're either in a high stakes competition and what are you listening to me for or they're being too picky now that's the inside now if you'll notice when i tip him over you're gonna see i got on him a lot right there all right no one's perfect that's okay and his crown there's I need to get right in between there, but that is such a small area that I don't really have to do two coats right there. I just do need to do the one coat and add a little bit more paint. See, I did that because my paint was running dry on my brush. But see, I got his crown a little bit. That's okay. We can still see it because we'll clean that up. Now, I almost dipped my paintbrush in the black paint. Just pay it, you know, you got to pay attention to a lot of things going on around you, yes, but you got to pay attention to what you're doing, too. That's obvious guy says that. What's that guy's name on the commercials? Captain Obvious? If you're hearing boiling sounds, no, I'm not cooking. That's the bubbler for the fish tank. Now, sometimes you just barely brush the top of your paint puddle with your brush to load something this small. Put it just barely on top of your paint puddle and then lift it up. You don't need a lot of paint on the detail brush. Because you don't, that means you're going to be reloading your brush more, okay? But you don't need... A ton of paint on a tiny little brush yeah you're gonna be dipping back in your paint more but that's okay you, you don't want to mess up these detail areas so you're gonna be taking your time going a little slower make sure you got the right paint especially when you've got a well a uh, paint tray that's got multiple wells in it like this one uh, that you don't accidentally if you because I've got four paint colors here and I want to make sure I don't mess it up sorry guys I got to sit back a second my back's not happy I've been learning to get used to my new braces for my feet and uh, my back's a bit sore plus it was out for four days last week 
Okay, the sun is finished. Now, I have noticed, and I'll show you around the sun, you see these light colored areas? See how it's just a hair lighter? That's gonna need a second coat. But it's terracotta, so you can even blow on it and the heat of your breath will dry it. Terracotta is so quick, a canvas, because it just drinks the paint. Some cam some things that you paint on, in including canvases, can, um, like if you're using oil paints, it takes sometimes days or weeks for that to dry. But with these acrylics on this terracotta, it's drying so quick. I think it would drive me nuts. I have not worked with oils yet. Uh, but a lot of my friends that do work with oils say they like it because they can correct a mistake quicker or easier than they can in acrylics. Because even if you're not working with terracotta or ceramics, your acrylics are going to dry faster. I think it's what's in the paint. I'm not sure why. I can't give you an answer to that. But that's one of the th first things I learned about acrylics versus oils. That all my friends who did the, the oils and the acrylics always said they liked the oils because they could correct a mistake quicker or easier rather, not quicker, easier in an oil because it takes weeks to dry. And it, to me, it looks different. But look up oil paintings and see if you think there's a difference. Let me know in the comments. Do you like, if you paint, do you prefer acrylics, oils, or watercolors? Personally, I can't stand watercolors. Now, I know a woman, she's part of my art group, and Nancy Burt, and she can sit down with a canvas and within 30 minutes, she can have a beautiful watercolor scene. She went to Venice a couple of times and she drew out some of the pictures that they had taken in Venice and she painted them in oils. Now you'll find that's a trick that a lot of painters do no matter what medium they're painting in. They will draw on their canvas before they paint it. That kind of gives them a blueprint. Just like this. This gives me a blueprint to go by. I didn't draw it, but it's the same premise. When they're drawing on their canvas or their paper or whatever medium they're using, you know, like drawing paper or canvas, whatever, they're giving themselves a guide to paint by. That's why when you're practicing with your watercolors, get a coloring book. Buy a coloring book because you don't want to mess up your kids and then have, ah, you know. And you practice your watercolors in that coloring book because there's already the lines there and you've got to learn how to control how much water goes with watercolor so you don't run, your paint's not running everywhere where you have too much water and not enough water that it won't paint properly. So I practice in a coloring book. I still don't like watercolors. I find them difficult. Now what I'm doing, I've got a few places with the sun that's still really white. They're hard to see right there, but they're still kind of the terracotta showing through. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna barely tap it on the spot and then I'm gonna just move the paint, kind of like concealer with makeup or, or you know, whatever. Um, I'm just covering the hole. Patching drywall, you cover your holes. Yep, same premise. I'm just covering the holes. And there. Do a spin to make sure we got it and almost lose the <laughs> terracotta pot. Oh, my. Now, that's the teal. All done. And that only took us 49 minutes. But, you know, that's pretty quick for a pot. Now, I have a bump that I want to smooth out. So, I'm going to just dry brush and just smooth it out a little bit. 
Remember the dry brush painting I told you about? That's another way to smooth a bumpy area before the paint dries. Now we're going to flip the pot up because it's dry enough we can hold it. We are going to go back to our bigger brush. We are going to go to our orange first. Now I'm not going to load the whole brush. See, you just load the end. When you're doing this type of thing, just load the end. We've got a narrow space. This brush is the same width as this space. So load the end of your brush, just like that. Put it down, push, and drag while you're pushing. And that will paint that area, unless your orange is about the same color as your terracotta, which mine is. And see, I didn't know that. So we can't, that, you can't tell anything's painted. So that orange isn't gonna work. So what you do when that happens, you're not gonna waste your paint. Scoop it up with your brush that already has some orange on it. Scoop it up, put it back in the bottle. Let's not waste, not want, not. That's what grandma used to say. Grandpa too, by the way. That was his excuse for getting more dessert at Thanksgiving. Grandma always told him he had a hollow leg. That's where he stored all the food. But he would not eat breakfast that morning. And he would wait for dinner for the Thanksgiving meal. And so my grandma always told him he had a hollow leg when he ate. Uh, because where else was he going to store all the food? And my grandma always used to tell him, his name was George, and she'd go, George, don't stand up and eat. All the food will go to your feet. In other words, he'll spill his plate. All right. I've got a darker gold. This one's called Antique Gold. Again, this is how you know I use this color a lot. This is about $5, it's about $6 after. And apparently it's brand new and I never opened the thing. Oh, lucky me. I did that because it's the same color as the paint and I couldn't see well enough to see if that was paper or paint. Sometimes your paint will cause a bubble right there and sometimes that will dry kind of that way or get tacky that way and cause a clot. All right, just load the brush a little bit. Because you see the orange was not something we could see through. No matter how many times we painted that, it wasn't gonna work. Let's see if this, now just put your brush down, press and drag. This will work. This is darker, but it's going to have to have a couple of coats, which is fine because, um, the, like you've seen, this dries real quick. But go further around your circle because this is a lot. You can put more paint on your brush and just go all, you know, just move your piece so that your brush goes around the circle. And now, don't forget the underside of the lip, but we'll do that by get. you can still use this brush. Just get some on the tip, on the bottom. That's too much, so I took some off, see? I just want this part. Put it against the bottom ridge, and the bristles will, I don't know the word, separate almost. They will follow the ridge. See how they conform? Conform, that's the word, to the ridge so that the bottom of the ridge is getting painted, but not the rest of your work, not all of it. You just wanna conform to that bottom ridge. And if you have to clean the teal up a little bit in finished painting, that's what, that, that's what final painting's for. Or you can switch to a detail brush, which probably would have been the brighter idea. Yup, yup, yup. But see, everybody makes mistakes. But, heck, I can fix them. All right, that's one coat. It's already dry enough I can apply the second coat that fast. So if I wasn't talking, I kind of probably could have had this almost completely done by now. Now, 
see, and that'll just second coat. It's not going to be a screaming wow difference. All right, but that's okay. Sometimes you don't want the difference to be, oh my gosh, wow, look at that, that's a second, no. Sometimes you want the difference to be very subtle. And because I didn't use my detail brush, I will have to clean the teal up and finish painting. That's okay. No sweat. Now, wash out my brush and switch to the detail brush for a second. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to heavily load the detail brush. So I'm really kind of dipping it in and let it load. I want it heavy. What you're going to do, there's not really a name for this except, I guess, drop painting. See the center of that? You're going to tip your work so that it's flat a little bit. And then you just, you go straight down to the center, push your brush down so that your brush conforms to the circle a little bit and then lift straight back up. So you're left with the pole painted, but not the outside of the star. Okay. I know it's a little confusing. Let me show you again, because I'm not sure if you can see. So load your brush kind of heavy this time. Get your spot. Push down. If you have to move it around a little, that's fine. And then push up. If you've got a string of paint like that, that um, was, did you see how it was staying on my brush despite my lifting my brush up? Twirl the brush. The paint will break off. Not break off, but it'll disconnect. And that's how you do the center of that. All right. Now, while you've got your detail brush in your hand, if you want to now go toward the rim and paint the rim better with your detail brush, instead of listening to Tanya and using your wide brush, go ahead and fix it. I've got to fix up some of this in, de in, in, in final painting, but final painting on this one's not going to take long. All right. Clean your brush. We're done with this color gold. When you're done with that color, don't leave it open. The reason being is sometimes you get busy with something else when you have to quit. You might knock it over if it's open and spill all your paint. Your kid or your cat or your dog might knock it over. I had an iguana that liked to knock over my paints with her tail. Wow. That was really annoying. Um or you might forget i have left the cap off bottles of paint and they almost completely dried up on me and uh a few of them i wasn't able to to re to fix and save now we're gonna go back to our wide brush and we're going in this inca yellow metallic paint we are going to paint this top area, but it's wider. So the same technique we used on the one below it isn't going to work. So what you want to do first is first you want to do this edge next to this white. Do all that first so that you have it done. Because you want to take your time next to that white. I don't want to have to clean up much next to that white. So if you get it on the white, use your thumb or a, t a towel sometimes doesn't work as well as a thumb. I just can't believe I said that. I hate finger painting. And just you wipe it off and then wipe your thumb on the towel. Just to keep that this area clean because this is where your plant goes. All right, you don't want paint. You don't want paint in your plants. So let's be cognizant of that and just go carefully around. Now this is a brighter, different, lighter color. So that terracotta color is going to come through. So it's going to need more than one coat. 
Sometimes when you're painting something, you want the bottom color to come through. Sometimes you don't. This is a case of I don't. But I'll put this down for a second. Because you really only need a second for this to dry for your second coat. Because like, like I've said a dozen times or more, the terracotta does soak up your paint. This is a case of the other way around. I wanted this flat yellow to come through. And the gold that I used, which uh, I don't think was that it would um, to be uh, like a secondary on the top. I wanted this flat yellow to come through with this other so I didn't completely cover it. That's not what we're going for with this pot. Now it's already dry so we can go ahead with our second coat. Now some colors depending on the color, might need even a third or fourth coat. Uh, depending on the color you're trying to get to and the color underneath. Sometimes you might want to primer the terracotta with a white or gray and just go over the entire pot, raised figures and everything, to get rid of this terracotta orange so you're not fighting with that color like I am that would give you a clean base to start with. Why didn't I do that? Oh, well, it's very simple. I didn't think about it. I'm not gonna lie to you and say I didn't do it because I wanted to teach you, which is a good teaching tool for you not to see it, or, you know, to see it this way. But I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think about it. And sometimes the prettiest colors come up when i am got another color underneath it. See? See how that terracotta color is still just barely there? That's actually kind of pretty. It gives it an orange gold type of glow. So I think we're going to go with that. I really like that. Now, if you don't like it, um, this isn't your pot. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, if you don't like it, you can paint over it. It's that simple. You know, if if you try a color and, oh my lord, that's just the wrong color. Now, I've done that. You know, and then you just stop painting with that color. Let it dry and either paint over it or sand it off and start again. I wouldn't recommend using paint stripper on terracotta i have never done that so if you are going to strip the paint off of a terracotta pot to begin with to get rid of an old paint do your research make sure you know what uh what that's going to do to your terracotta first okay first and foremost do your research and take your precautions when you're using things like paint strippers. Make sure you've got a mask uh, that will, and some eye protection. Because some of that fumes, it's like a, kind of like when you're cutting an onion when you're cooking. You know how it kind of makes your eyes water up and, and stuff. That stuff's not good. The paint stripper is even worse and it's not good for your breathing. It's not good. I have asthma, so I'm very cognizant of, of breathing. Um... You know, just, just be careful. Do your due diligence and make sure you have researched or you have someone who's done it before and knows what's going on. I want to experiment. So I'm going to take this ink of gold and go over this darker gold that we had. And we're just going to see. And, and don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to get mid-project and go, I wonder. Now, unless you're having a time constraint because you're doing it for a project a project for somebody uh, or something, don't be afraid to, I wonder how this is going to look. Because sometimes 
what I like to call a BFO or a blinding flash of the obvious turns out to be some of the happiest accidents and mistakes that you, and, and then you'll wind up using it again or something because you really like how that turned out, you know? So don't be afraid to do something like that. What I'm doing now is I'm just kind of trying to smooth that, that look out a little bit. But the bad thing about terracotta is that it dries so fast that you don't have a lot of time to smooth your paint, okay? So you may wind up putting more coats on than you thought you would. You thought you would. That was good. That was a real great move, Joe. My middle name is Joe. All right. Pick that. Now, sometimes with the golds and the metallics, they're not as forgiving as your flat colors. So sometimes when you make a mistake, you really got to repaint the golds. But there's the lip. I like that. I think that's pretty. Now, granted, I need to clean it up and finish painting, but that's fine. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take some more of this and we're going to go over the starburst, the sunburst. And it might look a little gloopy and it's going to maybe even go over the center. I don't mind if it goes over the center because I like the color that created. But if you do mind, use your detail brush instead of your big brush. Go slowly if you want your center to be a drastic different color. In fact, I'm going to switch to my detail brush if I can figure out where I put it. That's not it. That's it. That's what happens when you got more than one in your water. Um, sometimes lean your hand against something. See how I'm bracing my wrist? Because my fingers are wanting to shake. So what you do is you brace your hand against it. So that you don't shake as much. And you can get the painting. Just easy. And we can do the other starburst and we'll clean up. I'll tell you what. My boy's not feeling well, so he needs to go potty. We're going to stop this here. We will finish this pot together tomorrow. And that will give us a chance to see how the paint's going to sit soak into the terracotta as well and so this has been part one of the raised terracotta flower pot have a good day oops sorry about that